ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930 present The Drive. It is Tuesday, January 9th. Your drive begins now. ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. We're going to get your text in this hour, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We're going to give you a chance to win some Marshall basketball tickets for Saturday. We'll do that later on. Easiest way to be a part of that is be a part of the show. And we open up that text line every day for you. We had fun yesterday. A lot of conversation about maybe who should be included and in what I'm calling like a ring of honor. We'll get into that. Some folks wanted to chime in, talk a little bit more about that. So we'll hit that this hour. We'll keep that going. And, of course, we got the national championship last night and an anticlimactic national championship Michigan, the one seed, getting the victory over Washington 34-13. to The Wolverines finish 15-0, winning the national championship. The playoff expands. So next year, an opportunity for maybe more teams. I'm all for it. I'm for more teams, and hopefully that means there's more opportunity. I'm hoping we get better games. I don't know if that ultimately means we get better games because there will be more teams that have a shot at winning the national championship. So maybe that spreads it out a little bit more. Maybe that gives other programs an opportunity. You know, maybe you don't have such a log jam at the top with the elite programs like the Georgias, the Alabamas, the Michigans now. Michigan's up there. And with the way that the power conferences are restructuring. You know, I don't know what that log jam is going to look like in the future, so maybe that opens up a little bit more. I'm excited for it. At the same time, I don't want to see boring games. That's what I'm against. I'm against boring games, and, and no fault of anyone here. It's just Michigan was better last night than Washington. That was an anticlimactic game. I did not find much entertainment from it. I watched, but if I'm a Michigan fan, I'm all into it. If I'm a Washington fan, obviously you're not. If I'm a casual college football fan, I'm you know, after a while, I was like, okay, this this is it. Michigan's going to win this thing. It's pretty much a foregone conclusion here. There really wasn't any moment where I can sit and point to and say, Washington's going to make that comeback. Washington's going to make that comeback. Washington's going to make this a game. There was not a moment in that game where I thought to myself, okay, you know, once Michigan really started taking control, no, I think they're done. I think Washington is done. So, Let's hope that we don't get anticlimactic games in the future with the expanded playoff, but we'll get more opportunity, and at least I'm happy for that. You know, something else that happened last night on the internet, I was following that. I was trying to I was trying to do a lot of things, actually. I was multitasking. I was watching the game, and it was a Monday night hockey night for me, so I was watching some of that. I was going back and forth. You know, I tried to stay on the college game as much as I could. And Earlier in the day, I talked to a couple of people. These are people that I am friends with that also are in the media. I hate that term, but they work in broadcasting. They work in sports. And like, are you excited, Paul? Yeah, excited for the game? Yeah, I'm excited for that. No, no. The fact that EA Sports is going to announce, they're going to show a trailer. They're going to announce the date. They're going to show the trailer for... The new college football game. Okay, I hadn't seen that, but okay. Yeah, I'm excited for that, right? You're excited for that. Got a PlayStation, don't you? You got an Xbox. You're excited? For many years, that was the football game. You know, not Madden for me. No, it was college football. That didn't happen. Eh, Okay, no big deal. There's a couple of people telling me, but... Apparently, that was a thing. There were people upset, and I saw that on my timeline last night as well. There were people upset, not just disappointed, but mad. This is how funny that social media, X works. People absolutely angry and mad that EA Sports did not debut the trailer or a release date or anything during the college football playoff for the new video game. I can't imagine being visibly mad, angry over something like that, an announcement for the video game. Now, 
again, when that game was at its peak, I was playing it. I remember younger, back in the day, when you had to put cartridges in. That was it, Bill Walsh's college football? I was I was rocking to that. I, yeah, as a youth, as a youngster, I enjoyed that. So there are people like visibly mad about that. And that was something that was happening. I was like, what, what is going on here? Are people really that upset? I mean, if you're watching the game just for the trailer, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't do that. I don't watch games or anything like that anymore for trailers because you see that in marketing. Hey, at halftime, we're going to show you the trailer for the new whatever the new thing is. Movies, what have you. Because it's going to be on YouTube a few minutes after that. Honestly, once it debuts, it's going to be on YouTube like a minute or so afterwards. If not already. That's just how it works. I'm going to lure you in. Hey, you know, watch the game. I'm going to show you something, and it's going to be on YouTube right after it's shown. So you know, do you really want to stick around for that if you're not having fun? I was watching the game for different reasons, but I just thought it was amusing last night that college football fans were upset that the game didn't get debuted. And Are you excited for that, or are you among those who are like, yeah, shut up. I don't care. I'm not into that. Move on, Swan. So we'll talk about that. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. Oh, and by the way, Aaron Rodgers happened today. Shut up already, dude. Seriously. He was on Pat McAfee's show today. Just shut up. This won't go away. He thinks he's an expert on everything. He's getting to the point where he's just like a creepy old dude. He's a creepy old dude. You won one Super Bowl. That's great. You're really good at playing quarterback. That's great. I used to like you too. Shut up, dude. Aaron Rodgers, can you just go away? Come back when you have something to say. So he's on Pat McAfee's show today, and he was trying to clarify some statements, walking it back, because Jimmy Kimmel... If you watch Kimmel's show, Kimmel got associated with Jeffrey Epstein, or at least that was implied, and Kimmel didn't take too kindly to that. And so Rogers is trying to clarify some things after Kimmel roasted him on his show. That's what comedians do. They use their platform, and he's got a platform, pretty big platform. And he roasted him. Brought up his past assertions about COVID-19. You know, all the political stuff that, look, I mean, Kimmel can bring it up here, but you know, I don't know if I want to dive deeply into that topic, all the things that comes out of his mouth. I'm talking about Rogers, of course. So Rogers gets on clarifying statements or trying to, that he wasn't, um, directly accusing Kimmel of anything. And Rogers even, it was just like, it was one big dumpster fire if you looked at it or watched it. I mean, he's even criticizing ESPN senior vice president, Mike Foss. You know, Foss made a statement trying to kind of de-escalate a little bit. My stupid joke and... Rogers gets into that part where it's like, hey, it's media cancel culture. I mean, first of all, there's not really a there's not really a staff meeting. We in the media, air quotes here, we don't actually gather every day. We don't have like a newsletter. Okay, who are we canceling today? That doesn't happen. People are on platforms. I, I have a platform. Other people have platforms. You have tuned in to me and you hear what I have to say and then someone else is going to say something completely different. You might agree with me and if you do, fantastic. If you don't, hey, even better because I want to talk to you. I want to talk to everybody, but yeah, I love having the conversation a dialogue. And so Rogers is, is a dumpster fire. There's like nothing going on here. But that's not going away because ESPN's in bed right now, the Pat McAfee show. And this isn't 
you know, necessarily an issue with the Pat McAfee show. It's just Aaron Rodgers saying dumb things. And Kimmel, he's going to fire back. Rodgers is going to fire back. I mean, Kimmel did call him a Karen. Can we just talk sports? Is that okay? I'm good with that. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We got a lot to get into. We've got Sunbelt Player of the Week in basketball. No one from Marshall, so we'll highlight that a little bit. we got a Marshall game actually coming up this week. We also have some idea now of where one of Marshall's latest transfer portal departures going to. And, of course, we'll get your text in, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We've got a lot to get into. We want to hear from you as well. That's all coming up on today's edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Three zero four three nine six talk is the text line. That's three zero four three nine six eight two five five. Welcome back. My name is Paul Swan. You're listening to the Drive on ESPN ninety four point one and AM nine thirty. You can also listen online. We've got a streaming app. You go to our website. You can download that app there. It takes you right to the store. So if you've got an Android or you've got an Apple phone, all you have to do is go to our website. You can get the link to your store, download it there. It's free. You can listen to the station anytime, anywhere. You can listen to the show live or even one better, we get a podcast tab on that app. So you can listen to the podcast directly. You don't even have to go find it. If you want to just have one place to find it, it's right there. Get that app. It's free. And it's on your iOS or your Android store. The easy link to find it, WRPC.com. Our text line this hour, again, one more time, 304-396-TALK. Yesterday, we had a really good discussion about possibly honoring football players at Marshall University. Take this one step higher. There's already the Marshall Athletic Hall of Fame. And I think that's a great vehicle And it needs to continue to be a great vehicle for martial athletes to be honored, to be recognized for their contributions to the university. And, of course, I think it's pretty cool. You get into a Hall of Fame, that's pretty cool. Somebody thought well enough of you. And so that's great. That covers everybody. That covers football. That covers basketball. That covers volleyball. That covers all the sports, as it should be. And I think we're going to see more sports better represented here in years to come because, I mean, we got a Marshall National Championship in soccer. Of course, we've got some tremendous athletes and a lot of sports that need recognition. And so I think that's going to continue. It's not just a football-only Hall of Fame. Now, with that said... There's an opportunity here with Randy Moss getting into the College Football Hall of Fame. There's an opportunity here to maybe follow that up here soon. Not right right now, not right away. But there needs to be a football ring of honor. I don't see a negative. That's one thing that I, I cannot believe anyone would have is a negative to that. And so we had a pretty good conversation. A lot of people were suggesting, hey, you know what? Carl Lee would be perfect for that. Okay. I got to figure out what the criteria is for this. Now, of course, this is just our criteria. Whatever happens, if it becomes a thing, whatever the university and the athletic department's criteria will be, that's going to be the criteria. But we can influence it a little bit here. We can have our say and influence it and later go, hey, that's a great idea. wonder where you got that from. Or we told you so, or we can completely disagree. Should you be an All-American? Should you be an All-American? What is the criteria? Because we want to have this one step above. You've got the Hall of Fame, the Athletic Hall of Fame. But this should be a step above. Not everybody gets into this in the ring of honor. 
you got to meet a certain threshold. And this isn't saying that these are better than you type of deals here. This is like, okay, this has got to be really exclusive and it's got to be really elite. Not everybody gets in and that's okay. That's okay. But this is a different deal here. One step further. What are the criteria? Would College Football Hall of Fame be a criteria for this? I think that's a possibility. I mean, if you're you're going to limit it, maybe like, okay, if you're a Hall of Famer, if you make the College Football Hall of Fame, then that's one of the criteria. You, you're in. You get in. Who's in the College Football Hall of Fame? Michael Payton. So he's in. Troy Brown. He's in. Jim Donnan. He's in. Mike Barber's in. Harry Cy Young is in. Frank Laurie is in. And a texture said, hey, how about Jackie Hunt, first All-American at Marshall, held the scoring record for over 20 years, and in a weird twist of fate, wore the number 75. Okay, he's in. That's my initial class. Yesterday, we were trying to figure out who gets in the initial class. Well, I think you got to go look at your College Football Hall of Fame inductees and say, all right, if you do something, either they get one at a time once a year, you put them all in at once, and then you know, this isn't a yearly thing. Is this a yearly thing maybe? And I think it's got to be different than what it is for professional football. There's not necessarily – I mean – there's not necessarily like a, a Hall of Fame. Some teams maybe do, some teams don't. But I would think in professional football, when you see teams honor former players and coaches in a ring of honor, that's sort of their way of saying, hey, look, this this is who, who we recognize. We've already got that vehicle in a way for Marshall to honor former athletes across all sports. But I think this is the next level. You take this to the next level. And so – you got to meet some certain thresholds here to even be in the conversation. And this isn't something where you can buy your way in. If you if you're a if you're an affluent former football player and you got some capital with you, you not necessarily can buy your way in. Now, of course, we know how some things work. We know how things work. But I think this has got to be criteria based. Period. You can't, you can't buy your way in. You can't donate your way in. Only way you get in is you meet certain levels. So that's the first criteria, I think. Yeah, Are they in the College Football Hall of Fame? Well, okay, they need to be in the ring of honor because this is a criteria. So where does that leave, say, Chad Pennington? He's getting there. Don't worry about it. Now, I don't think this is the only criteria, but I think you got to have some criteria here. Because we can start naming people all day long. Hey, what about this one? What about Chris Parker? What about so-and-so? What about Carl Lee? What about? We can do that all day long. And... If we want to make this a real exclusive club, we got to start looking at what those criteria are. So what's a criteria that I'm overlooking? Because we're going to do this by committee. This is not a dictatorship here. We're going to do this by committee. We're going to have some input here. We're not just making edicts here. If you're going to put together a criteria, what this would look like. College Football Hall of Fame, okay, that punches your ticket. If you get into the College Football Hall of Fame, your ticket's punched. Absolutely. You're in. You can't be denied. So, Paul Swan's Ring of Honor, congratulations to the latest member, Randy Moss. He joins Michael Payton. He joins Troy Brown. He joins Jim Donnan. He joins Mike Barber. He joins Jackie Hunt, Frank Loria, Harry Cy Young. That's the ring of honor. But wait, where's Chad Pennington? 
That's where you guys come in. Get him in. How do we get him in? How do we establish the criteria so we can get Chad Pennington in? 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. This has been fun. More coming up. What's The Drive, ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. We continue on with this Tuesday edition of The Drive on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. I'm your host, Paul Swan. Our text line this hour is 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. I'm giving you a chance to win tickets. we got basketball coming up on Saturday. It's going to be a 4 o'clock game. I don't know if you've caught the time change just yet. If you haven't, let me get you caught up. The game on Saturday against South Alabama. It's going to be a 4 o'clock tip now. That changed. The announcement came out yesterday that all the remaining games on Saturday's home games will be at 4 o'clock. Now, tomorrow, we're going to talk a little bit more about that because I'll be at the Henderson Center, so it's an opportunity for me to catch up with Ryan Crisp. He's the Associate Athletic Director for Annual Giving. Usually with me on the show Wednesday, him or somebody from his staff. So I'm going to be at the Henderson Center tomorrow. We're going to talk to him a little bit about that, why the change was made, and what the fans are saying to him. What's the feedback been? Obviously, the feedback was that this should be changed, so they changed it. And now I've seen mixed feedback, all anecdotal, but I've seen mixed feedback. There are some of you who are like, I'm there. Let's do it. Okay. There are others of you that say, look, Hey, this kind of breaks up my day. You know, I can't really get started doing something early and then go to the game, or I can't go do the game and then go do something later on. It's sort of like right there in the middle. It's the worst possible time. We got youth activities, we got kids doing stuff in the mornings, and and we can't do it all now because the way this thing is placed at four o'clock. So who benefits from this? Who doesn't? That's my big question. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. But we're giving you a chance to win tickets to the game on Saturday. So if you can go, it's a 4 o'clock game, and the Thundering Herd will be in action against South Alabama. That's what you do. You text the show, and you will be entered to win those tickets. We've been having fun talking about possibly establishing a ring of honor sort of like the next level, sort of like an extra way to honor select few football players, coaches. You could do broadcasters as well. You could do that. You could put that up there. It'd be a limited group, but you could put that up there, sort of like other pro teams do. They have their ring of honor. They have broadcasters. They have, like, okay, for example, Steve Cotton. It's microphone Steve Cotton. Former voice of the herd. Gene Morehouse. You got to be up, like, up there. You got to be, like, S rank to get that on. And it's got to be, it's got to be somebody that worked for the university. Texture says Keith Morehouse. We could do that. We could put Keith up there. Because I, I would think he would qualify under that standard. Like, okay, you work for the university, so if you're doing the broadcast on a weekly basis for the university, yeah, I don't know how that directly works. If you're like doing the game and you're through the university, you're part of the university or you've been doing the game. I mean, like Sonny Randall, Keith Morehouse, Dave Weekly, those guys did games. Mark Martin, those guys did games and do games. Mark does a lot of the ESPN plus basketball games. You could have that as well. You you see where I'm getting kind of, kind of the concept here is you could have that ring of honor. You could have that extra step. And kind of looking for criteria here. 
ultimately, whatever happens, if this thing happens or not, and again, there's no indication that's going to happen. I'm just, I'm just fronting it right now. Hey, this should happen. And so who's in? Well, I think if you're in the College Football Hall of Fame, you're automatically in. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You're in. You're in. How do you do this, though? Or you could do something and let the fans maybe decide. Maybe you don't necessarily have that high of a criteria. I don't want to exclude anyone, but at the same time, everybody doesn't get in. I mean, maybe you limit it to like what? I know the Bengals are doing their, you know, and the Bengals are doing some really nice fan-friendly things now, trying to engage the fans a lot more. They they put Boomer Esiason in their ring. They're not, they put like an initial, like, okay, these are, these are automatics. Paul Brown, automatic. A couple other people, automatic. So who are your automatics? Well, I would think maybe the College Football Hall of Fame inductees are. And then maybe you could have it based on certain criteria and still involve the fans. I think that would be cool. Absolutely. And I think broadcasters would be allowed to as well because you know, when you think Marshall sports on the radio, you think Steve Cotton. Put him up there, sure. Now, he's a humble guy, so he's not sitting there you know, egging me on going, hey, yeah, bring my name up. No, that's not how he operates. So that's why you would put him up there because that's not how he operates. You know, he's not out there like waving his flag. You know, a lot of these guys aren't out there waving their flag, and that's kind of what makes it special. Yeah, you want to do something nice for somebody, and so you put those guys up there and you know, include them, include them for their uh, their contributions to the university. And I think that'd be a really positive gesture. I know we're getting kind of ahead of ourselves here. On you know, we got to get some people in at first. We got to get it established, and then you know. But I think if you get all American status, you're in. And I don't want to see numbers retired or anything like that because it that's just. You can't do that. Run out of numbers eventually. You can't do that. So here's the here's the way to do it. You can do it this way. Have a, a ring of honor of the greatest, the best of the best. And that includes Randy Moss. That includes Michael Payton. And using the College Football Hall of Fame as maybe in criteria, one of the criteria. I don't know if you have necessarily any more criteria because there are going to be some players that need to be up there that maybe aren't in the College Football Hall of Fame. I think that's one way to do it. Our text line, 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. So earlier today, we find out that Marshall, former All-American now, Jaden Harrison, he entered the transfer portal. So where did he end up? Well, he is going to be with Notre Dame now. He was on multiple All-American teams. He led FBS in kickoff return average, had two kickoff returns during the season, also named to the, uh, first of all, the FWAA, Football Writers Association of America. Um, He got first team there. He was Walter Camp, CBS Sports, 247 Sports, uh, Hero Sports, Sports Info Solutions. Played the bowl and now in the transfer portal, but now he's going to be at Notre Dame. It's a good get for them. I would love to see him back on the squad. I would love to see him more, more year with him. I would like to see Marshall use him more. Maybe in the new offensive regime, a guy like that doesn't get away. And I think that's what a lot of people are hoping that we see a, a new style of offense that kind of harkens back to the former style of offense that won Marshall so many games, going back to that Bob Pruitt era. Not saying a full air raid here. I, I like running too, but going back to that high octane offense, it was kind of funny. Conference USA. It was. Um, it was sort of like watching if the NBA was translated to football. It was like watching the NBA. You know, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. A lot of people like that, and hurt fans 
love that style of football and winning. But I hate to see him go. And Notre Dame, it's like Notre Dame got its last laugh. Okay, you beat us, but hey, look who we got. He was definitely one I would love to see the herd keep. So Jaden Harrison uh, signing with Notre Dame. Uh, he's out of the transfer portal now. 304-396-TALK, 304-396-8255. We'll get some of your text in when we continue on this edition of The Drive. This is The Drive with Paul Swan on ESPN 94.1 FM and AM 930. Still time for your text at 304-396-TALK. That's 304-396-8255. We got basketball coming up on Wednesday. We got basketball coming up on Saturday. Yesterday, we gave you a chance to win tickets to the Wednesday game. Now, I'm giving you a chance to win tickets to the Saturday game. All you have to do is enter in to our text contest. Now, what's that about? You just text the show. You add to what we're talking about, and you're automatically entered. Or you could just, I don't know, you could just be, I don't know, basic and say, hey, I want the tickets. I'll throw you in. You Just text me, I want the tickets. Not trying to make it hard on you or anything. Tickets to the game on Saturday. Again, reminder, it's 4 o'clock. All remaining Marshall men's basketball Saturday home games. It's going to be 4 o'clock starting this Saturday with the Herd playing host to South Alabama. And, of course, I wonder if, I wonder if, this is a big wonder if. It's a 4 o'clock game on Saturday, right? And the NFL playoffs, it's super wild card weekend, right? So, we're going to find out. Will my friend, the columnist for the Herald-Dispatch, Chuck Landon, be in full Browns gear as the Browns take on the Texans? And that's going to be like a 430 game. We're going to have that for you on and all the playoff games, including Super Bowl, right here on ESPN 94.1. And AM 930, I'm hoping I see Chuck on Saturday at the game. He'll have all his Browns gear on. Representing. I know too many Browns fans. I I didn't realize I had this many friends that are Browns fans. So if you, for some reason, don't want to miss the game, you want to go to the Marshall game and you don't want to miss the game at the same time, You can listen to it right here, ESPN 94.1 AM 930. Or you can get the app. I told you to get the app earlier from our website or go to your uh, iPhone store, your Android device, iPhone, wherever you you have uh, a phone account with, whoever you got. Get the app. It's free. You can listen to the game while you're at the Marshall game. So if you want to listen to a little bit of the Browns game on Saturday, you can listen to it. We'll have it for you here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. And you can go to Marshall game, of course, with the new tip time at 4 o'clock. I'm curious, how many Browns fans... Okay. Would that be really... Would that be that many, really, that, that skip the... Mar- would, would you, if you're, if you're a Browns fan, do you skip the Marshall game on Saturday to watch the Browns in the playoffs? That doesn't happen very often. Would you skip... The herd? Would you do that? Because this might be the Browns' only appearance in the playoffs this year. This might be it. Would you absolutely skip the game on Saturday so you could watch the Browns? I don't know. I don't know to tell you. And if, by the way, if you don't have Peacock, the Dolphins-Chiefs game, that's going to be exclusively on Peacock. Now, Peacock doesn't cost that much. Maybe you get the Black Friday deal like I did. I got Peacock so I could watch 
Honestly, I wanted to watch a WWE pay-per-view, and I thought to myself, hey, I can get an entire year of Peacock for this dirt rate cheap price. I'm going to do it. Maybe you can get Peacock for a month or two. You know what? Get Peacock for a few months. You'll, you'll get to watch Royal Rumble, WrestleMania. The kids will enjoy it. And you can watch the game if you're a if you're a Dolphins or Chiefs fan. I know some Dolphins fans around here. And, you know, the Chiefs are popular for some reason. I don't know. Patrick Mahomes, Travis Kelsey, I don't know. Any real reason there you would be a, a fan. But that's I'm, – I'm curious. I'm going to be looking for Browns fans that I know and see if they're in the crowd. Let's see. I know Woody Woodrum will be there. He's a Browns fan. I know he'll be there. Um, I know some people on the Marshall staff that they'll be there. They have to be. I know they're Browns fans. I'm, I'm going to do a head count and see – Absolutely see if there's going to be sort of, okay, he's a Browns fan and he's here at the Marshall game. Or he's a Browns fan. He's, I'm curious. That's I'm absolutely curious now. I mean, honestly, this is a big deal if you're a Cleveland Browns fan. This has got to be a big deal. You're in the playoffs. You don't get there every year. I think, what, this is the third time since the turn of the century? Is this like the third time in the playoffs since 2000? Monumental game. Of course, we don't care if the Steelers, you know, by the way, we have all those games, by the way. Saturday, Sunday, Monday, we got them all right here. If you want to go to the Marshall game, take your radio with you, take your phone with you, take your AirPods, you can listen to the game, and you can watch the herd as we speak. You got options. So I'm just trying to, I'm pushing the app. Go to the Marshall game, listen to the game. We'll have the call right here, and we'll have all the games leading up to and including the Super Bowl. And you won't miss a single thing. And on the way home, after the game's over, because we're going to tip off at 4. And we'll be over on 93.7 The Dog. So we'll tip off at 4. So what you could do is after the game, after you're done listening to me, I'll remind you, go over to ESPN 94.1 AM 930 when you're listening to the game on The Dog. And you can listen to the second game. That'll be the Dolphins and the Chiefs. So I don't think you'll – you really won't miss much of anything. So yeah, on your way into the game – don't forget, have the app downloaded. You can listen if you want to watch it and listen to it. You know, I know um, I think it would be better for you. Don't try to watch it on your phone. Just listen to it. Get the app. Listen to the game. Watch the herd play. Afterwards, on your way home, keep it locked on 93.7 The Dog as uh, we'll break it down. You'll get to hear what Dan Dan Tony had to say. And then at 8 o'clock-ish, you can flip over and you can catch the start of the game between the Dolphins and the Chiefs. I think it sounds like a good game plan. But I'm doing a head count on Saturday. I'm going to see if, how many Browns fans are not going to be at the Marshall game, and they're going to be instead somewhere watching the Browns take on the Texans. I already know a couple of Browns fans that will be there. So are you a Browns fan and going? What, what am I talking about? Browns fans don't listen to this show. They shouldn't. Other than Woody, Browns fans don't listen to this show. That's going to do it. Thanks for being a part of it. Thanks for having fun with me today. I really do appreciate it. Um, looking forward to talking to you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to give away tickets now. We have a few people text in for the tickets. We get a four-pack of tickets to the game on Saturday, 4 o'clock. So I will text you here in a minute. Let me know if you can go be by your phone and if by any chance – you don't hear from me now. You might get a text later because uh, obviously it depends on situation. You know, if we can't get those tickets to somebody, we're going to give them to somebody else. So basically, if they can't go or they can't claim them, we'll give you an opportunity. So you know, keep that in mind. If you don't win right now, you might get an opportunity to get those tickets later. So the more you text, the more opportunities you get a chance to win. Thanks for tuning in. I'll be back with you tomorrow here on ESPN 94.1 and AM 930. 
retransmitting in Glorious FM on 94.1 W227BS Huntington. This is 930 WRVC Huntington, celebrating 100 years of broadcasting.